Hey, Whitney here, fellow mountain climber and host of this channel, Mountain Climbers. Listen, if you love the stories that my guests share each week and it inspires you and gives you hope that you'll reach the top of your mountain, then I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, Mountain Climbers. I'd be ecstatic if you were a part of my Mountain Climbers community. So I am so excited for you to hear my guest story today. This man has many titles. He is a husband. He is a father. He is a grandfather. He is a pastor. And he is a commissioner. Yep, that's right. Scioto County Commissioner Brian Davis is my guest today. And I got to tell you, I cannot wait. I, I'm so looking forward to you hearing how God revealed to him that he needed to pursue the uh, spot of, of commissioner and, and fill that empty seat. And it's just such an inspiring journey. And one, I'm so glad that he took because he's helped me in tremendous ways. About a year ago, I set out on this journey to improve the healthcare system for people who have to receive government benefits because it's just, it's not a good one. And I didn't know how to do that. And uh, Brian, he stepped up and he got me to the right people who needed to hear my story, my experiences, and my voice. And because of Brian, I am now seeing real change start to take place. And I have a hope that I never had before. And I think that we all can see that because of Brian's leadership and his diligence that Scioto County has been the better for it. And he truly cares about his constituents. And so we're going to go over and meet him uh, via Zoom and hear this journey. And here's the thing that I'm excited about because this is something that Brian has taught me. And I think that you're going to learn this as well. And that is many times real change starts here right at home. And that is a hope that we need to grasp onto because of the tensions that are so high right now in the world that we're living in. To know that we here in Scioto County can step up and do our part to produce real change, well, that is an amazing knowledge that I hope that you tap into. Don't grow weary in due season. Let your voice be heard and work towards a better future and a bright hope for tomorrow. Brian, thank you so much for coming on Mountain Climbers and being my guest. It's great to be here. So I feel like before we jump into the interview, I need to preface this because some of your uh, elected official friends might watch this and I will probably not be able to refer to you as Commissioner Davis because you're Brian to me, you know? Exactly. We've known each other a lot longer than I've exactly. been a commissioner. So. Exactly. You watched me grow up. You were my youth leader. I babysat your kids. So just, I just want, you know, to them to know I'm not being disrespectful. You're, we're just, we're friends. You're Brian to me. Exactly. So yes, definitely. Exactly. And, you know, so I'm, I'm excited for you to share about your journey becoming a commissioner and, you know, what you taught me and what you, you show this community is a lot of times change starts right here at home. Yeah. And it does. And I'm excited for you to give everyone that hope, especially since we're in an election year right now. And people need hope right now. They do. So they, they, they do. So first of all, I just want people to kind of get to know you. So share a little bit about yourself and your family. Sure. Um, my name's Brian Davis. And I have been happily married for all 29 years to my wife, Lori, who uh, I, I cherish and she is my best friend. And um, we have been blessed with four children, four children. And I'll explain that. We have two daughters um, that um, they're, of course, they're older now and they have started families of their own. And uh, we have of course, they're married. They live down near Cincinnati, and they uh, uh, both have had their first ch child. So we we had two grandchildren, a boy and a girl, um, in Rosaria and Hudson, and uh, and now we're expecting two more. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Excited about that. That was made of Facebook <laughs> official. Yes, and, I saw that. Uh, yeah, we're not allowed to tell until it's made Facebook official by them. So. 
we had to wait. So we're going to be the happy grandparents of four children come February. And yeah. uh, now our, our uh, the other two children uh, are our sons, and yes. that is Colton and Blake. And um, they were actually our nephews yeah. who we took into our home five years ago and mm -hmm. uh, from out of very difficult situation. Um, but we um, did take them into our home, not really knowing what was going to happen there as far as the future and, and yeah. where that would land us. But in the end, um, they asked us to adopt them a year ago, and we did adopt them. So they now yeah. are our sons. Yes. So they are 13 and 11, and they're doing wonderful. And uh, they are now Davises, and they live in our home, and, and we're raising them, of course, as our children. So um, we're very blessed to have them. And, uh, you know, that journey in itself has been a mountain to climb. It has. Uh, and we'll probably talk about that on another episode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lori would be yeah. a good one to talk to on that. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you're on that list. Yeah. Okay. Well, on the, on the, you know, that whole process and what it takes. And then yeah. some of the, you know, when we got them, they were damaged and mm -hmm. we had to go through a lot of, a lot of, uh, hills and valleys to yeah. get to where we are today. And, uh, but we're blessed and we would do it all over again if we had to. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And as an outsider looking in, it's, uh, so amazing to see, you know, cause I remember when you brought them, into your home and they started coming, you know, to RCC with you guys and just to see how they blossomed under your care. I mean, they're completely different boys. And, um, so I, I think that's just so commendable. What uh, you we, always, we always say, uh, you don't always see them like we do <laughs> sometimes <laughs> kids are kids, you know, and, 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 and they're going to have their bad moments too. But, uh, um, but they do have everybody else pretty, pretty kidded on that they don't they don't they don't know what we know but no they're a blessing and, and what you're saying is true with structure with discipline with um you know education with yeah. love love is the main thing that is the it's not even a secret sauce you know it's not even the secret recipe it, it, it is what it is and, and we have to love so um and and no regrets you know on, on what we've done so god's really blessed and and really um, that's me and my family, and and uh, and then of course there's a lot that goes into that. So. There is, and we're gonna we're gonna get to that. And you know, you're a big family man, but an extension of you is you're also a businessman, yes. and a success successful businessman. And you've been um, uh, the uh, owner and managed uh, Soul Choice of, of mm -hmm. Shoelace Factory for many years. How many years have you been the owner? Well, I I was the owner up until recently okay and we um i i did actually sell my shares and leave the board this past year but not because of any problems or anything like okay. that yes. um, when we first bought um it was it was actually called mitchell lace at that time we bought yes. them in 2009 uh -huh. and there was seven christian businessmen that came together to buy that company and and really it was a david versus goliath um, yeah. um you know if you go back and you look and and, and see what happened yeah. there we were up against billion dollar companies that were looking yeah. to buy it and actually piece it out and sell it off and mm -hmm. we didn't want portsmouth to lose another industry so yeah. we dove in we worked hard um mm -hmm. we actually won that process where we actually no. had to go to court to get the company God saw fit to award us that, you know, because really it was a true David versus Goliath effort. Yeah. And from that point forward, um, you know, I, I've been part of that. We've grown the company, made in USA, a great story, mm -hmm. uh, rebuilt the company. It had really just totally fallen on, on hard times yeah. and saved what jobs we could. We built that up and now yeah. we're selling all over the world. We sell domestically. We sell to many, many other countries. And God is blessed, and and that's just been part of it. My my intention now is, um, you know, when you when you go through a life threatening situation like I did a year and a half ago, yeah, um, being diagnosed with cancer, a very rare form of cancer, which is another totally different story. I know. There's so much we can do here. <laughs> I know. There's a lot to unpack, but uh, we uh, but you know when you go through that. Um, and having spent the time in prayer 
and mm -hmm. seeking God's face and saying, Lord, am I where I'm supposed to be in my life right now, doing what I'm supposed yeah. to be doing? And the Lord yeah. showed me through that process that, look, I've got, I've got a greater yes for you. I've got something I want you to do. So and, cool. and, and I will tell you that it was very much a, um, a leap of faith yeah. because I, I'm quite happy. I was quite happy with the situation. Um, very comfortable in that situation. And maybe that was part of the problem. Maybe I was getting too comfortable. And God said, look, I, I've got something else for you. Okay. And you're going to have to leap and not know where you're going to land. And I'll show you once you leap. That's so tough. it's a tough thing. It really is. So uh, that's where we're at right now. I've okay. left and I'm yep. in midair. <laughs> and and my wife and I are praying. Where are we going to land? You know, yeah. so so it's okay. We've been there before. We've done things like this before. God yeah. has always been faithful. God has always been true. Amen. And as long as we are faithful and we hold to His hand, we're going yeah. to be fine. We don't worry yeah. about that. Um, yeah. The unknowns. I think maybe when I was younger, the unknowns bothered me more than they do now. Mm -hmm. But that's because of experience. Um, yeah. The unknowns in life, you're always yeah. going to have unknowns. One thing remains constant, and that's that's God's provision. So I'm not worried about that. We'll figure it out. We'll get there. But yeah. uh, so well, I'm excited to see what it is. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> he's starting. He's starting to show. And may, maybe a year from now, we'll sit down. And we'll talk about it again. I I look forward to that. We'll plan on it. Uh, yeah, God, God's God's moving, and there's some doors opening. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so you you talked about experience. And, you know, so I, I would like to know, what is the most important thing that you've learned in the years that you've managed your own business? Okay, yeah. I, I, <laughs> uh, there, one thing I will tell you this, when we first took over the company, we had no idea just how bad it had been decimated. You know, mm -hmm. that's one thing when you, when you buy it, you, uh, you find yeah. out when you walk in the doors, what's, what's left, what's able mm -hmm. to be uh, salvaged, what customer yeah. base is still there. We literally, when we came in, 95% of the customer base had been devastated. Okay, so when, when, when that happens, you buy a company, you spend all this money, literally, in my case, my life savings. And yeah. I stayed married in the middle of all this. It was amazing, okay? It really was. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but um, you talk about, you know, right away, you better get to work and you yeah. better work hard. Because everything's riding on what you do. And, yeah. and I think that's one thing I've really learned as far as part of, you know, being an owner, um, mm -hmm. being responsible in a startup, basically, that yeah. had been devastated, yeah. is hard work, determination, mm -hmm. persistence, yeah. performance. And then in the middle of all of that, and, and I say it like that because this is so, so vitally important. God's in the middle of all of that. And I will tell you that our first two years when we were in business, we literally were praying yeah. for receivables to come in so that we could stay alive. Wow. wow. And there was times that we would leave work on Friday saying, we've got bills due on Monday and we don't know how we're going to pay them. Yeah. We've got payroll coming up and we don't know how we're going to pay it. And we would go to prayer and we would just agree together. We're going to pray and God's going to provide. God's going to provide. And I, I can tell you that every single time it's God amazing. provided what we needed, enough, yeah. a need, not, maybe not the wants, but he provided yeah. need, just as he promised he would supply yeah. our need. And, yeah. and we would, there would be times it made no sense, none. It made no sense why someone just paid early because they wanted to. No. <laughs> Who does that? Uh, no. We send a check two weeks early. I just... I just wanted to go ahead and pay you. Who put that in their heart? Who does That's that? Miraculous. Yeah, oh so only God. Only God could do it. And we're talking about people that are hundreds of miles away. They live in New York and California, and, and God moved in New York and California, and and, it, and, yeah. and and it made no sense. But every single time, you know, my business partner would come to me and say, "We're good. We got it." And 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 then there was other things that would happen in the business that were just it, they weren't happenstances. They were yeah. right on time. God knew what he was doing. So I really learned for me, mm -hmm. what I learned 
the most important thing I learned was how to depend on God more. Yeah. yeah. And it strengthened my faith mm -hmm. so much. And I thought, you know, I, I often think that the whole purpose for me to go through this stage in my life was for God yeah. to really show me that. Yeah. That I needed yeah. to be seen. I'm, I'm one of these people that need to see things. Mm -hmm. I guess that's really bad. You're supposed to have faith and believe, you know, regardless. But I am, I'm a visual creature. I yeah. am. A lot of people are. They got to see it. And yeah. I'm very much a, a Gideon that has to, yeah. you know, has to try the Lord. And, and I, I hate to say that, but it seems like that's what I was doing oftentimes. Yeah. And now he's calling me to be, uh, instead of a fleece preacher, which that's another thing I do, but a fleece preacher, I have to be a faith preacher. Yeah. And those are two different things. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's the greatest uh, thing that I've, I've gained. Yeah, and you know, one thing like your faith and another passion of yours is, like you said, to bring jobs not only to America, but right here into yeah. Scioto County. Yeah. And so I would venture to say, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that maybe was something that started piquing your interest in politics? Well, Wendy, this is an amazing story. Okay, okay and, and, and everybody, when they hear this, this will probably blow your mind. I lost my job okay. in in June of 2009. Okay. The former company that I worked for for almost 20 years. I was called in and said, you no longer have a job. The bank has taken over the business. Mm -hmm. Sales has been wiped out. You're no longer a part of this. Pack your stuff up and go home. I was devastated. Yeah. So I saw the writing on the wall to hear those words, as many people have heard those words, not just in 2008 and 2009 when we saw the Great Recession, yeah. but today, so many people, their jobs have been displaced or eliminated or they've been laid off or, and all yeah. these things. And, and I, I hope this can speak to them because this is what I did. I went out to my car and I, I just bowed my head and I said, God, I'm, I'm in a place I've never been before. I've worked since the day I was 16. My dad took me to McDonald's and said, son, you're going to get a job. And I yeah. went and I got a job and I, I, I never lost the day's work yeah. from the time I was 16. And here I am. And I'm like, I don't have a job. I've yeah. got two kids and starting college. I've got, I've got bills to pay. I've got all these things going on. What do I do? And of course, you know, I thought I got a little bit of money saved up, but that's only going to last so long. Mm -hmm. So I, I went home and, I left <laughs> and one of the hardest things I had to do was tell my wife that I, I didn't have a job. Yeah. And, um, and of course that hit, that hit us hard, you know, but at the same time, God, you're going to take care of this. Our faith was strong. God had brought us through many, many things before. Yeah. Um, you know, I, the, the prior year, I lost my mom and my dad to cancer. Lori, yeah. lost, Lori had just lost her dad yeah. to cancer. I mean, all these things were coming on us at once. Um, and the devil was sitting on my shoulder saying, look, here you are. You, 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 you worked, you know, hard to provide for your family. You're a mm -hmm. preacher. Where's your God now? Where's he yeah. at? I, I'm telling you, I heard it more than once. Yeah. And I just determined, look. You know, God, you've blessed me before. You're going to bless me again. And I sat down in front of a computer. Mm -hmm. Never done this before. I had email. That was about the yeah. extent. You know, in 2009, there wasn't a whole lot going on. But there was something called Twitter that was brand new. Brand new in 2009, okay? Yeah. And I sat there. And, you know, as part of that whole journey, one of the things that I did was I tried to lobby some of our elected officials to help the company. I knew they were in, t they were in some tough straits. I knew they were. And I thought, well, maybe they could help. But you know what? None of them responded. None of them tried to help. And I yeah, thought, I think that's terrible. If this company is losing jobs and, and possibly closing, how many other jobs are being lost? So I'm sitting there in front of my computer and I, I thought about this, and I, I learned this in uh, some of my sales training, that it's yeah. really good to have a goal. Yes. 
and also to have a one, three, and five year goal. Yeah. So this is what I did. I wrote down, uh, here I am on Twitter, and I'm like, I gotta have a name. You know, on Twitter, you've got to at such and such, yeah. right? Got a platform. You gotta have, yeah. So I was like, you know, I can't <laughs> die. what do I do? So, so I'm sitting here and, and I thought, okay, my, here's what I'm gonna do. Lord, if you can make it possible, and I know you can, five years from now, I, I said, God, provide a job, do this, do that. I mean, I had a whole list of things and I said, God, this is what I need. This is my need. This isn't my want. This is what I need. But five years from now, if you bless me, I'm going to turn around and try to prevent what has happened to me from wow. happening to someone else. Wow. That's amazing. And I made my name at, and you can look at it today, at oh, yeah. Brian Davis 2014. Now this was in 2009. Wow. Okay. Wow. So what happened? Well, we, I got a call out of the blue from a fellow Christian businessman that said, we need to try to save this company. We need to try to do what we can to save these jobs. I said, yeah. I'm on board. We did it. We fought the devil in hand to hand combat. And guess what? We won. All yeah. right. So all of a sudden I have a job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Check. Yeah. Check. And, and, and God, you're going to bless me. Well, five years later, five years later, I've gotten a little bit involved in some politics. I'm helping yeah. some people on some yeah. campaigns. And I thought, and I, but I still saw a major need yeah. in leadership in, in, yes. in someone that, that had a business acumen that could get involved yes. and start asking questions yeah. and, and start working for the business community. So that's when I, um, you know, started getting some feelers, you know, like, yeah. what do you, what do you think about this commissioner position? Yeah. And they said, you know what, that, that's, a, that's a place where you can actually get some things done locally. And I said, well, that's where I want to be. I want to be where we can actually get something done. Yeah. Well, there, was, there was a seat that was coming open. Um, you know, the commissioner uh, Rife was retiring. And, yeah. um, and he was going to be retiring at the end of the year. And, and, and I started down that process. I'm, I yeah. uh, announced... To the party, I, I had to, it wasn't easy. Not yeah. everybody was sold on Brian Davis. It was a five-way primary, a yeah. primary in the Republican Party. Um, I wasn't used to this whole politics, politician yeah. thing. That wasn't me. I really didn't like the label at all. I just wanted to do something, you know? Yeah. yeah. So won the primary, 49% of the vote in a five-way race. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. That's amazing. All right? That's amazing. But then I had to unite. You know, I had to bring everybody together and, yeah. and we were blessed. You know, and during that process, and I want to tell this story, is that I had a woman come up to me in the middle of it, and, and, and you know, one thing, and I've kind of alluded to it, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a preacher. Yeah. I have been for 21 years now, you know, and, and I had a woman come up to me, and she goes, how dare you? How dare you, as a man of God, get involved in politics? And it was... I, I, I really had never thought of it. I had yeah. heard some people, you know, some older people say, two don't mix, you shouldn't get involved. Yeah. And, and I said, well, ma'am, I'm, I'm just doing what I feel like the Lord's leading me to do. Yeah. And she said, no, the Lord would never lead you to do that. And she walked off. And that bothered me. I was yeah. like, gosh, have I totally misread this? Or is she yeah. just really a mean woman? You know, I, did, I didn't know. <laughs> and, and I didn't know for sure. So. I went to prayer about it and I just couldn't get any real clear message and a good friend of mine. And when I say his name, a lot of people that are listening will know exactly who I'm talking about. And it, brother Tim Throckmorton okay. contacted me and he <laughs> said, brother, are you having any problems with this election? And I said, well, Tim, you're a preacher. You'll understand this. Let me share something with you. And I did. I shared it with him. what happened and he yeah. just started laughing. And I said, well, Tim, it's not funny. I said, I kind of feel bad about this. He goes, do you know who Frederick Muhlenberg is? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's going to get a history lesson today. He said, do you know who Frederick Muhlenberg is? I said, no, no, I have no idea who Frederick Muhlenberg is. He goes, well, interesting story. He was the first and the third speaker of the House of Representatives. And I said, oh, okay. I said, what does that have to do with me? He said, yeah. 
was he was a minister. Yeah. And wow. I said, no, he goes, yeah, he was. And a matter of fact, Frederick Muhlenberg didn't want to get involved in the first American revolution, even though he saw, you know, the people suffering and he saw all these yeah. things happening. He didn't want to get involved because he was a preacher until they burned his brother's church down in Boston. Then all of a sudden everybody's like, well, maybe we ought to get involved. Yeah. Okay? So he yeah. got involved and he stood tall. Matter of fact, if you go to Statuary Hall, in Washington, D.C., in the Capitol building today, he's the only minister that has a statue in Statuary Hall. He stood when other people wouldn't stand. And, and there was key votes early in, in yeah. the, um, the creation of our country, <coughs> votes that Frederick Muhlenberg took, and it was often the tie-breaking vote yeah. in our small democracy at the time that had profound impacts on our our democracy, and he always sided on the side of right. He couldn't be, he couldn't be swayed one way or another. He always sought the Lord on his votes, and and I felt a lot better after that because yeah, I figured that's right sign that you needed. Yeah. So, and, and it made me think, and and a lot of people need to hear this. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those people that have been told Christians don't have any business voting or getting involved yeah. in politics, you know what? I got I got a question for you. Has America gotten better or gotten worse because Christians aren't voting? Now think about that. Yeah. If there was more Christians involved in politics, I'm not talking about, you know, this where it's greater than God and you pay more attention to politics than God. I'm yeah. not talking about that. Yeah. I'm talking about doing our civic duty. And exactly. at times, and by the way, there are a lot of Christians serving in public office in Scioto County and elsewhere, all across the state of Ohio in this great country. But by being involved and making those decisions and God-sent mm -hmm. decisions and answers yeah. that our moral compass is the Bible and Christ, yeah. how much better could America be yeah. if there's more godly people involved yeah. in decision-making? And, yeah. and that's why I do what I do. I, yeah. don't, I, I don't do this for personal gain. I don't do it for personal... Yeah. Um, notoriety i do it because i know that there needs to be a moral compass in these offices making these decisions and we're blessed we are yeah. blessed locally that we have that yeah. we really, yeah. very much do and and that's really why i got interested in politics <laughs> yeah yeah well that, i love all the stories that you told it's just so cool how you know your faith and, and you being a businessman how you had that epiphany that hey i can take what i've learned and use it into a, an elected, you know, office. And so, you know, you kind of touched on it, but I kind of want you to dive in a little bit more. I'm curious, why commissioner? Why didn't you go for a state or federal? Did you feel that God was calling you to the position of commissioner to help our county? I, I, county? I did, and, and I could answer that really simple. We're not going to fix our problems from the top down. We're not. If we're going to wait on Washington or Columbus to fix our problems locally, we're going to be waiting probably a very long time, if ever. Real solutions, real answers don't come from the top. It always comes from the bottom up. And if we can build that foundation, that firm foundation and build it, well, we know who the, who the firm foundation is, right? But if we use those same guiding principles that Christ yeah. expounds on us and expects us to yeah. use, we build that foundation on those things. Okay. Then we start building from the ground up. I'm telling yeah. you, that's the answer for America. It, 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 and when you have that, when you build from the ground up, personal responsibility is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, individual liberties is a big part yeah. of that. Uh, yeah. As part of our Christian faith, we don't we don't look to impose mm -hmm. our thoughts on others as much as yeah. we look for ways to bring our thoughts together. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 I think that that is so vitally important in what we do, and that's why I'm excited about what we do here because every single time we mm -hmm. meet, every single time, yeah, we we have the ability to bring about change in our yeah. community and positive change and mm -hmm. and and forward progress that's what we need 
where a lot of times it's gridlock above us. Oh, yes. It's gridlock, and, and nothing's getting done at the highest levels of our government right now because everybody's just, they're, they're, they're fighting. They're, they're, they're not together. We're here. We're able to, we don't always agree. That's one thing everybody needs to understand. Um, you know, my fellow commissioners, Mike, Mike Crabtree and, and Kathy Coleman are wonderful people. But do you know we don't always agree? There are times that we like, no, nope, I don't like it. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And, you know, we'll say those things. And then we part ways for a little bit and come back and we think and yeah. we pray and we, you know, we, we, we think about what we're doing and then we know when it's time to come back together and say, okay, okay. let's talk about this. Yeah. And that has worked. That formula has worked so well. You know, Christians don't always agree. Nope. That's, oh. that's for sure. And, but you know what? Um, one thing that one of the most misquoted verses in the Bible, and there's something that I, I think this is another yeah. great, a great epiphany for me one day yes. we often hear the words where two or more are gathered in his name there he is in the midst right well a lot of people think that has to do with church attendance you've ever heard anybody say that well at least there's two or more of us here and and uh we may not have very many people here but bless god we're here <laughs> okay never heard that it didn't well it doesn't ha i've heard people use that verse as a yeah. um well it's okay that only two or three of us are here it's attendance yeah. Actually, that's not what it was about. It was about conflict. He yeah. was dealing with conflict. And, and here's the thing we need to remember. Where there's two or more, he's, get, he's there in the midst, right? Yeah. Why is he in the midst? Well, to keep us civil. Exactly. Yeah. To keep us civil. Yeah. We've got to be kind one to another. We have to show charity one to another. Yeah. And, and that's, that's something that was, to me, it really opened my eyes. Everything we do, we need to do as if Christ is in the midst. And isn't he? That, yes, that's great. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah. again, that's something that I, 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 I like to share every once in a while, especially when there's turmoil. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I hear every once in a while, wait till I get a hold of them. I'm going to tell them. You know, I hear this every once in a while. I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe I ought to just calm down a little bit, you know. And, and, and sometimes I get upset, you know, and I have to remember in the midst and you know, wherever I am Christ is so I you know I, I have to remember that but um you know, change is so vitally important at the local level yeah, it that is. Change can be good or bad mm -hmm. and that's why it's important that we have the right people in those offices yeah, exactly. and in those positions of authority exactly and so speaking of the right people you know you uh started on the journey many years ago to become the commissioner and what what was your platform what did you run on saying this is what i want to accomplish for Scioto county well one thing was the fiscal responsibility mm -hmm. um we had just come out of fiscal emergency um mm -hmm. you know there was there was a change in the commissioner's office before i went in which yeah. led us in a different path a more of a conservative path so yeah. that that had been reversed okay. within the first year of, of the time I came into office. That had already been reversed, but yeah. we were still, it was precarious. The situation was very precarious. So I ran on, look, we're good, but we got to be better and we got to start yeah. building up reserves and we got to make sure we're fiscally responsible and that we don't misspend yeah. money. We've yeah. done that. We've done that. We use fiscally conservative ideas on how to keep us fiscally safe and if there's ever been evidence of it here we are in the middle of a pandemic and the county is financially sound yeah, yeah. even in the midst of loss of revenue and everything else we are financially sound and we were ready for whatever emergency came our way if you had told me two years ago or even a year ago that it was going to be a pandemic i would have yeah. laughed at you probably because i would i wouldn't have believed it but yeah. you know the the money we had the carryovers and the, and the the money we had uh, hmm. saved up was for an emergency yeah pretty much yeah. for an emergency and here it is so we're here yeah. um fiscal merge i mean fiscal uh, responsibility is one of them another hmm. one was bringing people together working together um yeah. you know cooperation in between other entities and here we are i mean we have cooperation on many levels yeah. from here and i like to say from the courthouse to the white house you yeah. know, oh, we're talking and we're cooperating and we're we're sharing ideas and we're yeah. taking care of the issues and 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 we're doing that. The third thing was jobs. 
yeah. my lands. I, I, you know what? Some people don't realize that at one point, 10 years ago, we was at 15.8% unemployment in Scioto County. Ooh. Terrible, terrible numbers. Probably yeah. some of the best numbers in the country. And when I came in, we were, I believe it was 11.9, somewhere like that. It had come down a little bit. But still, double digits, terrible numbers. So, so my my thought was, look, businessman got an idea how to start one. Let's let's try to work on this, and we got our economic development wheels going. I mean, and that's a hard thing to do when you go from nothing to something. It's hard to do. So we had to get like-minded people on the same page, and that wasn't easy because there was still a lot of strong forces from the old way and how it used to be done and. Um, we had to fight that at the same time we had to create new do things that had never been done before and, and I'm so glad to be able to say you know nearly six years later uh, there has been so much progress made uh, this last year we hit 4.8 percent unemployment at one point I mean that that's just ah. incredible numbers and 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 now you know of course COVID didn't help us and and even in the midst of a pandemic, oh my gosh, when it hit it hit fifteen percent, and I was like, yeah. oh my gosh! But you had all these people thrown into, I mean, unemployment, yeah. and we're back down to like ten point eight, something like that. Now yeah. we're hoping that the July numbers come in even lower. We still have a lot of people that are unemployed; they're not working, and mm -hmm. the pandemic really caused a lot of that. But at the same time, our economy is rebounding. We're seeing it in sales tax revenue and things like that. We're um, auto sales have been really strong and people are spending money. So um, we're hoping that that continues. Our economic development team is working, I mean, working day and night uh, to bring in companies. We have a lot of interest in entrepreneurs. COVID, we had so many projects lined up right before COVID happened. And then it, all of a sudden everybody's like, okay, let's put the brakes on. Let's get, let's get through this pandemic because nobody's spending money. Nobody's got a, you know, a lot of people have been put in unemployment. They're coming full circle and we're getting back at it. So we're starting to see that happen. We've worked hard on our industrial parks to make them attractive. Mm -hmm. The Menford SOAR project out by the airport, Haverhill, all the, um, you know, all the work that we're doing on infrastructure, the sewer yeah. plants and all that to attract companies to say, okay, infrastructure's in place. I'm building my factory here. Yeah. A lot of that had not been addressed for many years. Yeah. Here we are. We're working hard. We have partners at the state and federal level. We're doing a lot of hard work. And that was one of the reasons I ran is because I really felt like, look, we're missing. We're missing the boat. We, we, yeah, we have river, but our docks are in deplorable situations. We have railroad. We have highways. And now we have a brand new, you know, half a billion dollar highway. What are we doing to capitalize on it? And we're doing that. We're getting that infrastructure in place. Mm -hmm. And here we go, and we're attracting yeah. business. And you know, we we actually increased the number of people working last year. That's so great. We stopped the bleeding. Now we're adding jobs, and and that's what I was hoping to accomplish. That's COVID kind of it's a speed bump, but yeah. it's not a mountain. So yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 okay, we'll, we'll take care of it. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, Ryan, you talked about like this school bringing jobs in those those were the things that you you know uh ran on but I, I have to say i think your biggest platform that you ran on was your faith you yeah. talked about it throughout this whole interview i knew you to be a man of faith before you know you ran everyone in the community did and so you're not shy about it and i love that about you and so i want to know is how important is it to you as commissioner that you point your constituents to Christ it, it, it's it's very important to me I am not ashamed of the gospel yeah okay it is the greatest story that could be told it is life-changing it's transformational and everybody needs to hear that story um, you know someone once said the greatest sermon you could ever preach is without words yeah and if That's people true. see Christ in you people see mm -hmm your faith. I don't have to put a tag on my back or on my lapel that says I'm a Christian. I don't have to. People can look and they can see how I act. And and and, and some may say, well, you know, believe it or not, there's actually people don't like me, you know, but, but that's not going to change how I interact, you know, but 
there are there's people out there who don't like me it saddens me but that you know but my faith is so vitally important to me and i i i really feel like in a in a community that's hurting mm-hmm. especially right now yeah. my goodness people want to hear hope they yes. want to hear that there is hope for yeah. tomorrow yeah. that that covid isn't permanent yeah. and 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 that that christ cares through yeah. all of this none yeah. of this occurred to christ when when this when this pandemic came it just didn't occur and i always believe this that that some things are not God sent. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But for the Christian, it is God filtered. Mm-hmm. And there are certain things that God allows to take place. And if, if it's for his glory, which it always is, yeah. then what better way than to show yeah. everyone the love of Christ and that we're going to be okay. And yeah. I try to share that. I, I don't have any fear over COVID-19, I don't have any fear. Uh, you know, if I get it, God's going to take care of me. Do I take precautions? Yeah, sure. You, you use common sense. But yeah. but at the same time, I don't let it keep me from doing things. But my right. faith is so vitally important, and I share it often. I, I'm not ashamed of it in any way, shape, or form. And I know that, you know, with separation of church and state, we hear that a lot. Um, you know, we do things at the courthouse and, and we've taken ridicule for it. Trust me, you know, the Bible reading and the rotunda and the fact that yeah. we pray before every meeting. Do you realize that prayer had not been taken place before a commissioner's meeting for over 40 years until wow. 2017? Did you wow. know that? I did not yeah. know that. Now I want everybody to go back in history and think about now, you know, look, I'm not going to over spiritualize it, but was there a correlation to the decline of our county and the lack of prayer over it as far as the timeline. It makes sense to me. And I will tell you that when we started doing that prayer and we started doing the pledge before every meeting, there were some people didn't like that. Sure they did not. I'll I'll tell you exactly who didn't like it. And that was the devil. Devil didn't like it at all. And he's fought us all the way, but you know what? That's all right. Because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And I don't worry about those things. I just, I do what I feel is right. And yeah. we do as a board. And and, uh, and God, I believe God is blessing for that reason. What's um, obvious? Yeah. You know, I mean, there, look, we got a lot of problems in our community. We do a yeah. lot of social ills. I think we would agree on that. And the devil is fighting terribly. You yeah. know, when you try to take ground that the devil's had for many, many years, He's yeah. not going to give it up without a fight. Oh, no. yeah, right? So if we put on the full armor, we go to work every day, and we, we do battle. And yeah. uh, certainly do. Yeah. And then speaking of battle, you know, you've been commissioner for 10 years, right? Am I, is my math right? No. Six. How many? Six. Six. Okay. <laughs> I'm English brain, Brian. I'm it feels that way mind. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. But six years, so... You know, you're going to keep fighting, you know, you want to see other things improve, you want to accomplish more. Can you share just a little bit about that? Well, a couple of things. One, as you know, um, our children's services really yeah. uh, underfunded, greatly yep. underfunded. You know, they get a lot of their funding from the state. They do have a local levy. It's actually too small. Um, yeah. The levy is, um, I think only about 20% of their funding comes from local taxes. Yeah. The rest is all grants and state funding. Um, we, our children's services is, a, is in need of reorganization. They're doing that. Uh, yeah. As many know, we have had some, some terrible deaths, uh, young people, um, mm-hmm. you know, that have died as a result of the opioid epidemic. Yeah. I mean, it's all always directly related to that. So we're really wanting to see something happen there. And uh, one of the things we're working on right now is a children's intake center. Uh, where when children are removed from a home, that, that child, instead of being tossed straight straight back into possibly a, a, an unsafe environment, that there's a, a window of opportunity for them to go somewhere to be mentally evaluated, physically evaluated, and give the courts, the judges, wow. the, the caseworkers, family, uh, wow. services time to adequately evaluate the situation find the best safe alternative for that child 
and give them that buffer, that little bit of a buffer and window yeah. for that child to A, be loved, yeah. to, to let them know that, look, someone does care about you yeah. and we're going to make sure that you're taken care of. Um, that's something we need to do. It's vital that we do it. And we're going to be reaching out to the faith community to help with that. Yeah. Um, we need the private sector to really come through in a big way in our community. Um, so that's one issue. Jobs continue to be a major issue. We got to get more people working in higher wage jobs. We need more, uh, we need more blue collar living wage jobs uh, in our community. We need more white collar living wage jobs. We need, we, we need jobs, period. But we need more living wage jobs. And that's something that we continue to work hard on. Um, our median income has went up in our county. It has for the first time in many, many years. It actually reversed and started going up but not enough, not even close to being enough. We have to continue. But, you know, a lot of times when you have a train going really, really fast down a track, yeah. and that's one way I, I kind of, um, this is how I describe Sioux County. Sioux County was going really, really fast on a train track at a high rate of speed, and it was all going downhill, okay? Yeah. And if you've ever seen a train, in order to stop a train and yeah. reverse a train, it takes a long distance before that train can actually stop. Well, we got that. We got there, and then here we are, and now we're climbing a mountain. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Which is what this is all about, right? And uh, we're yep. on this mountain. And you know trains, I always think about that. Thomas the Train, you know, I think I can. I think, hey, that's, that's what we have to do every day. Yeah. We have to say, I think I can. I think I can. Just keep on going. And it's a yeah. slow process, and it's hard, and it's tiring. Yeah. But that's where we are, and, and yeah. we're getting there, because here's the thing. The more people mm. you have pulling in that right direction, the easier yeah. it's going to get. And every day, somebody new gets on the train. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, I'm going to pull, I'm going to push, whatever it takes. More strength, it's going to get up the mountain with people. There pulling. you go. So we're getting yeah. there. Yeah, we are. We are. And um. So, you, Brian, I always love to close my episodes with a call to action to give people hope. And that, and that's, uh, just like we said, we need hope right now. Uh, this country, there's so many tensions running high, uh, heartbreaking situations. Um, yeah, it's just a mess in some ways. Um, but you know what? God's faithful, of course, and we're going to be okay. Um, but I would just love for you to encourage the constituents of Scioto County. And, you know, the theme of this Mountain Climbers episode has, has been change starts at home. That's what the theme's been. And so I just love for you to challenge and encourage them to not be weary in due season, to keep working for a bright future in hope for Scioto County. Okay. You know what? There's so many ways to do that. And, and one of the things that I, I encourage people to talk to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And your neighbor isn't necessarily the person living next door to you. No, that's right. Your neighbor could be the person working next to you on the job. Yeah. Or your neighbor could be a close friend at church that lives on the other side of town. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. your neighbor's somebody that you know them, but you haven't taken the time to get to know them. You know yeah. what I mean? I so do. there's a difference there. And we oftentimes think we know how someone else feels mm -hmm. or perhaps what they're going through or where they are in their life at that moment. But a lot mm -hmm. of times we're so far off base so and we have no idea yeah. what other people are going through, how mm -hmm. they're hurting, yeah. um, or how they feel. And I yeah. will tell you that, that through the process of this year, yeah. I have had to sit down with people that I wouldn't have normally sit down with, you know, and take the time and show the concern mm -hmm. to sit down and say, tell me how you feel yeah. about this. Yeah. Tell me how you feel about that. Because yeah. we are so torn yeah. through so many tensions right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we know that there's been, there's been racial tension. There has yeah. been um, COVID tensions and yeah. people just literally torn and losing friends as a yeah. result of how they feel about different things. I think everybody yeah. needs to understand that we don't all feel the same way. Exactly. And that's okay. Yeah. 
yeah. it's, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and try to find common ground. Mm -hmm. That's often hard to do if you're yelling at each other. Yeah. 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 So that's something that I've tried to do is, is, is take the time to sit and listen, mm -hmm. not just the people that I know, yeah. but the people that I agree with. Yes. That's easy. Yeah. Right. That's easy. Yeah, and Lord even talked about this, you know, he talked about, you know, you know, how, how easy is it for you to talk yeah. to someone that you agree with basically, but, yeah. but you know, how about your enemy? You know, what are you doing to try yeah. to win them to Christ? What are you doing yeah. there? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so I have really worked hard on that. Have I been successful in every venture? No. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and, and, and I back up and I'm like, okay, I'll try again later. Yeah. You know, and maybe I was the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I always ask the Lord, you know, show me, Lord, if I, if I yeah. failed you, if I yeah. didn't have that situation right, show me. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I think that's part of being humble. That's another yeah. thing. Leaders need to be humble. Mm -hmm. uh, servant leadership is so vitally needed. Yeah. Uh, it's not about us. It is very much about those people we serve. Yeah. Christ showed us that so many times. And, and if we're to be Christians and if we're to be Christ-like, yeah. We should be willing to serve others and, and be humble about it. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I'm not. And, and I won't be until I get home one day. And I'm not talking about my house on 89 Maple Street. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about my house in heaven. But, yeah. but I'll, 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 I'll be okay then. But I'm not yeah. perfect on this side. Yeah. But, but I long to be because I want to bring my Savior yeah. to glory. Yeah. You know, I want him to receive the credit of yeah. his transformational work in my life yeah. Yeah. you know because brian's never been perfect and he, and he won't be until i get to heaven but but all i can do is strive and yeah, keep exactly. climbing that mountain you know climbing keep, mountain. keep climbing and, yeah. and i believe that that god gives us yeah. the provision to do just that he does and you know i you've helped me in so many ways and you've instilled hope in me that i did not know was possible and I love that you you do what you say you're going to do and it's obvious with all the positive changes here in Scioto County and I just I can't appreciate enough what you've done for me this this community and I'm just so excited to continue to see what you do and and what doors God opens up for you and I think my favorite thing about you Brian is that you show this truth right here at home you yeah you do and i always tell people this too i said keep your fork the best is yet to come grandma yeah. always told me that whenever i was at her house and she always yeah. put a big spread of fried chicken out and mashed potatoes and gravy and i, don't, I hope you've eaten lunch but uh she put this big giant meal out and uh -huh. then she would say brian save your fork the yeah. best is yet to come yeah. And the next thing I would see is this big piece of apple pie with ice cream dolloped on the top of it. And she would yeah. slide that over to me. And I knew what grandma was talking about. And that's exactly the way I tell people, keep your fork. The best is yet to come. We've got a bright future and there's good things coming. It is. And, and you show people that every single day. And, and you show them here right at home this tremendous truth. When your strength comes from the right source. Absolutely. There's not an apple you can't climb. Right.